Genesis 32, look at verse 9. We got it? Amen. 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 All right. And Jacob said, O oh God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord which said unto me, Return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. Come on, somebody say, I will deal well with thee. I will deal well with thee. Come on, somebody say, I will deal well with thee. I will deal well with thee. The phrase, I will deal well with thee, means that I will be good to you. Say, I will be good to you. Now, look at me for a second. Let me give you um, the background of this simple passage that they just read. Jacob, as you all know, whose name meant supplanter or a heel snatcher or a corn artist. That was the meaning of his name. And because he had this name, he acted it out. He used everything known to him to get his way in life. He was not ready to go through the normal course of life. For him, if there was a shortcut, he would take it. And to a degree, he was successful. You know, sometimes, some of the people that we know and we are jealous of, you have to ask yourself, how did they get what they got? Many times, they are working in the Jacob anointing. The heel snatcher mindset. Everything they have, they stole or they got it by some crooked means. But you may never know. So this was the profile of, of Jacob, hallelujah. And he walked it, he lived it, and he enjoyed it. And for a time being, he was successful in it. But the Bible says that his brother Esau rose up against me and said, You, you have stolen that which no man can give to me. And because of that, I will kill you. And you all know the story. He fled and he fled. He fled from the face of his brother. And the Bible says when he was fleeing, he got to a place called Luz. And he used the stones in the place to form a pillow. And he slept that night. And when he slept, the scriptures tell us that the heavens were opened. He had a vision. Hallelujah. He dreamt and he saw a ladder that was from heaven touching the earth. And on this ladder were angels ascending and descending. In other words, they were going up and down. And when he got up, he woke up from the dream. The Bible says also, and on top of the on, on top of that ladder stood God Almighty. And when he got out of the dream, he woke up and he said, My God. He looked around and said, My God, God is in this place. And he made that outstanding statement. And I didn't know it. He said, God this place and I did not know it and the Bible says he took the oil that he had the anointed oil the olive oil that he had that he had he, he, he traveled with and then he took a, a stone and he laid it over there and he anointed the stone and he says the Lord God Almighty if you are who you will without fail will take me into this land that I'm going to and give me food to eat and raiment to put on and bring me back safely to my father's house this stone that I've put to the ground and anointed shall be your house and he changed the name of the place from Laos. And he said, this place shall be called Bethel. Let me say Bethel. And the Bethel means the house of the Lord. So he had gone, being a slave in his, in his uncle's house, Laban. And the Bible says, as he served, the man changed his wages ten times. And you know what? As he was busy serving, then the God that he met at Bethel, the God that he made a covenant and a promise to, how many of you know that when you make a promise to God, he, he takes it seriously? Oh, come and say amen. amen. <laughs> Why do you think the devil doesn't want you to do it? Hallelujah. When he made that promise unto God in Bethel, God took him seriously. And when he was in trouble, when his uncle was abusing him and mishandling him and, and, and everything was going haywire and he couldn't pinpoint a, 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 a solution, the Bible says that same God came to him and he says, Jacob, you have served your uncle for too long. It is time for you to go back home. And he packed his bag. He said, pack your bag and get out of here. That God that he made a promise to at Bethel had followed him. 
And he said, enough is enough. My brothers, my sisters, there are some things that may have gone on in your life. The devil may have had his way, but there comes a time God says, enough is enough. For some of you, it is this morning. For some of you, it is this morning. The very thing that you tried to crack and you couldn't crack. And you tried for years and you couldn't crack and there was no way out. God is saying this morning, enough is enough. So I'm still telling that story. I'm not going to miss the scripture here. But I'm having a good time. So anyway, so he packs his bag and he's fleeing from his uncle Laban. Because he was afraid of him. Jacob is always afraid. Jacob is always afraid. That's why he told lies and he cheated and all that. He's always afraid. The boy was such a coward. Mama's boy, kitchen guy. So, so the Bible says he fled from his uncle Laban. And then Laban comes home and finds out the guy was gone. Laban says, come on, let's go look for him. This is, oh, God did an amazing thing. The Bible says when Laban packed his stuff, he was about to go after Jacob. And then God appeared to him. And he says, Laban, I am Jehovah. You see that boy that you want to run after in your house? He was just a house boy. He was just a servant. He was just a slave. You used him and abused him just as you want. But you know something? He's my boy. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Come on. Somebody say, He's my boy. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 Amen. They may have messed you up, mishandled you, said whatever they want to say about you. But that comes a time God rises up and He says, This is my boy. Enough is enough. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody, affliction will not rise up a second time. Amen. For indeed, indeed, indeed. Weeping me and joy, friend, and indeed, my joy rises up in the morning. He says, come on, Laban. He's, he spoke to Laban and says, listen, I give you permission to go and meet him, but don't tell him good or evil. What kind of thing is that? He says, yes, you want to go after him, but when you see Jacob, don't say good, don't say evil. Because that's my boy. And Jacob did not know any of these. You understand what I'm saying? So you can imagine, he sees Laban coming and he's terrified, he's, he's scared and all that kind of stuff. Not knowing to him, the man that is coming that you are afraid of, God has already spoken to him about you. Hallelujah. Glory to God forever. That which you are afraid of, God has already gone ahead of us and attended to it. Glory to God. You have nothing to fear. The man, the woman, the individual, the situation that you are afraid of this morning, I prophesy to you that God has already, God already Spoken about it. Spoken about it. Spoken about it. What we call trial, what we call temptation, what we call difficulty. Listen to me. Look at what the word of God says. God has already spoken about it. The Bible says God will not allow any trial, any temptation, or any difficulty that is greater than us to come our way. But such as has come out to man. And with every trial, he makes a way of escape. He has already spoken. This morning... God has spoken for you. Jehovah has spoken for you. Hallelujah. Your parents may not speak for you, but God has spoken for you. The government may not speak for you, but God has spoken for you. Hallelujah. God has spoken for somebody in this place. Hallelujah. So the meeting you are about to attend, God has already spoken for you. Don't be afraid. Take the word of the Lord. Take the counsel of the Holy Spirit. For he has already spoken. So Laban, Laban goes and he's carrying all these men with them, but he had specific instructions from the Lord. And the instructions was that when you see Jacob, that boy, don't speak good to him or evil. He may have been a slave in your house. He may have been this. May, your perception of the guy may be this, but he's my boy. Don't mess with him. So this Jacob man, he's, he's, he's about to, he left Laban, he's about to meet Esau. He's so terrified because, you see, he doesn't know what God has done. He doesn't. And you see, many times that is where we are. We don't know what preparations Jehovah has made. You, you have no idea the preparations that God has made for you this morning. You have no idea the preparations that God has made for you for the week that is coming. You have no idea. You are still confronted with your bills, your challenges, and everything that you look at. And you are wondering, how can I make it? But God has already spoken for you. He has made arrangements. Over the, my years in ministry, I have seen that gloriously how the spirit of God himself will make arrangements and settle things even before they arise. God 
What kind of God is this? I did not even know I was going to have a problem and then he provides a solution. I'm like, how is this possible? I didn't even know I was going to be confronted with such a need, yet he has already made provision. Some of you, you may not even know when people will disappoint you, hallelujah, and you're like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Little would you know that God has already, you didn't even know, but that God has already made provision for you. You have a meeting, the individual that is supposed to be helping you with your paperwork and everything, you get over there and they are not there. So, but I told you I was coming. So I got something else to do. Um, I'll talk to you, they click, they hang up the phone. Then you're standing and you're stuck, saying, my God, what am I going to do? I'm not prepared for this. Then all of a sudden, somebody that you've never met shows up and he says, is there anything I can do with for you this morning? I see you are carrying this piece of paper. Do you need help with locating where to put it and this and that and that? And by the time you realize you've been helped for free, God knew you were going to be disappointed. But he said, that is my boy, that is my girl. These things cannot happen to my children. I have to make advance provision for them. So Jacob, is waiting for Esau to come and kill him. And this is what I wanted to look at this morning. I'm almost, I just want to stay up this morning. Amen. Verse 9. Verse 9. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, and the Lord which said unto me, Return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. What is happening is this. Jacob was so terrified because he didn't know the provision that God had made for him. So he calls upon the Lord and he says, Lord, maybe my ways have not pleased you. So I'm not coming this morning to you in the name of Jacob. I acknowledge who I am. My sins are before me. But I know something about my grandfather Abraham. I know something about my father Isaac. I know your work and your relationship well. So I come in their name. So they have put this God in the name of Abraham, in the name of Isaac. And he says, yes. I also know that it was you that appeared to me. And you told me to get out of Laban's house and go back home. Right now, I don't feel your presence. I am terrified and... I cannot confirm that you are here. I am concerned and I'm terrified and I'm scared and everything around me doesn't look like you are here. So in essence, where are you? And then he remembered that God did not just tell him, go back to your country. But he also told him, I will deal well with you. Give the Lord a mighty clap this morning. Hallelujah. Child of God, you know something? God will deal well with you. By the time all is said and done, the only thing people can say is that God has dealt well with him. Sometimes even human beings will, will organize negative things against you and you may not even know. At your place of work, people will do things, say things, mess up the whole place before you even show up. You don't even know. And they're expecting for you to be terminated because of everything that has gone wrong. And by the end of the day, they are the ones that are terminated. You are the one that is standing actually to be promoted. So then they gather again because they have to gather again. And they say, wow, God has done well with her. Child of God, don't be afraid. Don't worry. This morning, you may actually be at your weakest point in life. Maybe coming to church was even a challenge for you. You said, ah, do I really want to go to church? I don't feel like going to church. I don't feel like church this morning. I feel like churches this morning. <laughs> Glory be to God forevermore. Amen. <laughs> but before you can church this, you have to church it. 
Glory to God. So you drag yourself into the house of the Lord. The word of the Lord to you this morning is, He will deal well with you. Amen. He will deal well with you. Amen. In everything, He will deal well with you. When all is said and done, when all is finished, at the last curtain call, everybody, not you, you don't have to tell anybody, they are the ones that will examine your life because they'll be looking at you and then they'll say, wow! This could be nobody but God. This could be nobody but God. That is how God works. I encourage you this morning. Don't throw in the white towel of surrender. Don't give up. But even when you feel weak and tired, hallelujah, stir yourself up and say, you know what? I will even do more for the Lord Jesus Christ. When everything around you looks negative, hallelujah, stand yourself and say, you know what? I will serve more. I will pray more. I will fast more. I will read my Bible more. I will go to church more. I will witness more. I will evangelize more. I will be more than what the enemy ever thought I could be. And all of a sudden, you, you begin to feel the hand of God come upon you. And empowerment comes. The things that you have said that you do, you'll be able to do them beyond measure. And that which the enemy told you you couldn't do, now you realize you can do it actually. Because the anointing has come up. You will deal well with me. Some of us will stand in that promise. Amen. That is why we are still here. Amen. There is a promise over your life. Amen. God will deal well with you. Amen. Oh yes, God will deal well with you. You will sing, you will dance, you will jubilate in the presence of God. Because God is telling that he will deal well with you. Hallelujah. It's not man, amen. People may not like you, but it doesn't matter. Hallelujah. God likes you and he will deal well with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When you hear me talk about Jesus, he's the owner of my life. You know, sometimes, listen, people of God, listen, I understand the challenges and the difficulties of this life. But you know, you have to have a spark in your spirit. Everything that you are is within you. Always go back deep within your spirit. There's a spark. There's a word. Stir yourself up in the Lord. Hallelujah. There is something that will come out of you. It's got fire. It will rise up in you. Energize you and cause you to be able to do what you've been told yourself you couldn't do. For the righteous man, every man that believes, nothing shall be impossible to him. Amen. If you believe it, it shall come to pass. Amen. If you believe it, it shall be done. This morning, I want you to know that God is here with us. Amen. Jehovah is here with us. He stands right here with us. He is with you. And his word is that he will deal well with you. So don't look for negativity. Don't look for wrong things. Don't look for broken things. Don't look, don't look for them and don't expect them because it's not going to happen. Don't wake up in the morning expecting things to break, expecting things to, to fall apart because you heard on television or the devil too. Don't listen to all that kind of stuff. Listen to what the word of God tells you. The Bible says the earth is filled with the goodness of the Lord. Wake up in the morning expecting the goodness of God. As you go into your office, expect the goodness of God. Tell yourself, God says he will deal well with me. I walk into my office with that understanding that today, God will deal well with me. Oh, people of God, can I tell you something this morning? Lift up your hands. If you can see me, wave at me. If you cannot see me, hallelujah, put your hands down. Then we need to do a healing service. Catch this revelation. Whenever you begin to see the attacks of the enemy on your life increase and intensify, just remember you are only a step away from your breakthrough. Amen. Always remember that. Like when you kill one problem, seven will come to your spin room. Remember that you are just a step away. And many times, during times like that, you are even affected emotionally. The enemy beats you down emotionally. You become so stressed emotionally. And you are like, let life get away from me. I encourage you this morning. Remember, you are only a step away from your breakthrough. Because God will deal well with us. In my years of ministry, it's been quite some time. I've seen quite a lot. One thing nobody can change my mind about 
is that God is faithful. Amen. People can argue with me even about my preaching method and style, and they may win. Some may even tell me about how I quote the Bible. I should be quoting NIV. They may win. It, but when it comes to God, is faithful. Amen. That one I have a corner on the market. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. I say with the service. This morning we sing, we dance, we jubilate, we testify of the goodness of God Almighty. The generosity of Jehovah. The kindness of God is not a slogan, it's for real. Tell somebody, God will be kind to you. Tell somebody, tell, make sure you tell them. It's a prophecy. Say, God will be kind to you. So, oh, hallelujah. On, so Jacob is laying down and he's got all these things on his mind. Laban, uh, um, he saw his own crimes. A foreign land. His life was just filled with uncertainties. And unknown to him, God had already fought Laban and given him a strong warning. God has melted the heart of Esau. Hallelujah. The land that he was going to, there was so much abundance in the place to support him and his big family. Everything that he was concerned about, God had already dealt with. He just didn't know. He just didn't know. This morning, the things that you're already afraid of and you're concerned about, I want to tell you, and that you are one of the Holy Ghost, that God has already dealt with them. You just don't know. So then, pick yourself up. And tell yourself, I will live. I will succeed. I will prosper. Unless somebody asks you, how are you going to do that with where you are right now? And tell them, if I knew, I would have done it. But there is a God in heaven that promised me. He will deal well with me. So tell them, watch. Just watch. And see what the Lord will do in my life. Just want to be encouraged. Be strengthened. Don't judge yourself by what you don't have. Don't analyze your life based on what you don't have. Don't sit down and analyze what you don't have. Don't meditate on that which is wrong with you. The devil likes that. So he can magnify your problems and your issues. Unknown to Jacob, the Esau guy that he was so afraid of because of some things he did to the guy and he's afraid because Esau was coming with 400 men and he thought Esau was going to kill him, his wife and his children and everything. The Bible says God had melted Esau's heart. You know what Esau was looking for? He says, man, I miss my brother. I miss Jacob. Will I ever see Jacob before I die? He's worried. Oh, Esau is going to kill me. Meanwhile, Esau is like, man, you know, finally it dawned on me. There are only two of us. And I miss my brother. Will I ever see him? So when Esau was coming, he was coming with a melted heart. He couldn't wait to get down from his horse and embrace his brother and tell him, I love you. I've always loved you. But because Jacob was a supplanter and a corn man that could never forgive in his head, so he's going to kill me. Can I share a revelation with you this morning? <coughs> oh, you don't? This is for free. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Always watch people that even after you've told them, I forgive you. They still see and say, you know, the way you looked at me last Sunday, I think you have not fully forgiven me. And stay away from such a person. I know you'll be wondering, Pastor, why are you saying something like that? The reason why I'm saying that is because this is the reason why they cannot believe that you have actually forgiven them is because if they put themselves in your shoes, they will not forgive you. So it's so difficult for them to receive. 
That is why, you see, it's a very simple principle in life. When you see somebody who is reluctant in receiving anything from you, you know why he's reluctant, right? Because they won't give to you. So if they receive something from you in their head, oh, I'm indebted to you, and I gotta give you something, I don't want it. Generous people also know how to receive. So that is why Jacob had that problem. He had that issue because he sat and thought about it that if I was Esau, I will never forgive Jacob. I have to kill him. But it's a new day. It's a new day. Many times we judge God by who we are. Whenever we think we are good, that means God is good. When we are bad, God is bad. <laughs> Amen. No. God stands outside of humanity and he touches man and he uses them like you and me. So let's know who he is and receive that which he has for us. Amen. This morning, the blessings of God is abundant in this place. Amen. How do I know? Because he is here. When I'm coming to church Sunday morning, and the enemy begins to mess with me. That is when I know I'm going to have a great service. That's why I know this is going to be a great day. It's already started wonderful. This morning I was all dressed up. So as I put on my nice shirt. And yeah, I said nice because I want the devil to <laughs> And you may not think it's important, but I will share something with you. As soon as I put on my shirt, I stuck my cufflinks in, President. All of a sudden, I began to bleed from my nose. And I'm like, look at this. Why didn't you do that five minutes earlier? Now that I've got my nice shirt on, you want to mess my shirt up so that I, don't, I can go to church. I said, you know what? You lie. Then I knew that, oh my God, I'm going to have a great day today. So I began dancing. Started dancing, oh praise the Lord, I began dancing. So I've been excited all morning. And, 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 and I walked into my office and glorious things are already happening. Amen. Oh yeah, I've been around for a long time. I know this thing, I know this thing. You can't discourage me. Is, you cannot discourage me. Nothing discourages me. I may be tired, but I'm not going to be. I mean, look at how far God has brought us. Look at how far God has brought us. I've been in this town for a long time. I've seen things. I've seen, I've seen all kinds of things. We are still here. And today, we, as a church, we decided to celebrate my, my birthday. Everybody's coming around. They give me a hug. They say nice things. They send me a wonderful message. And then all of a sudden, you want to mess my day up. It's not happening. Come on, somebody say, it's not happening. It's not happening. Hallelujah. So be up and be. Be brave. Be bold. Be courageous. God will deal well with you if you believe as it so shall it be. But if you do not believe that, I don't know what your story is. Wake up in the morning and say, you know what? I may not have all the money I'm looking for, but the word of the Lord told me on Sunday that God will deal well with me. I believe it. Says mark the upright man. The end of that man is peace. I believe it. And by the time you realize when you are closing for the day, you begin to count your blessings one after the other. One after the other. And speak to yourself. Encourage yourself. So this year is a year of unprecedented overflow. Speak to yourself. Take your checkbook and say, checkbook, you know what? 2018, unprecedented overflow. Whether you like it or not, you'll be bored. Amen. Power in your confession.